So I recently bought a few movie pamphlets off of Yahoo Auctions Japan. And these don't go for very much. So, um, yeah, these are just like maybe a few hundred yen each, right? Plus shipping or whatever. And uh, let's, so let's look at the first one here. This is obviously Aliens. Or as it's called in Japan, Alien 2. Now it's, uh, this plastic sleeve is extremely reflective. So let's take it off here. There. All right. So on the front there is the picture that actually, hold on. <laughs> so I have a poster of Alien, right? Right there. Um, maybe I can <laughs> turn this off. There, that's it, right? You see it? Of course you can. All right, great. Yeah, so that's the shot that, that was used for the movie poster. And on the back, kind of like the whole gang here. That's pretty cool. And, um, yeah, some people who don't even get a whole lot of uh, camera time. <laughs> so, yeah, here we go. Alien. So let's look inside. Oh my cow! All right, so this is this is great. And there's the there's Newt. There's the, the, the sleeping chambers here. This is a really cool shot right here. This is the Narcissus being picked up by the deep space salvage. That's really cool. I like that. So actually, the model for the Narcissus from the first movie was gone somehow and uh, so they had to build a brand new one for this movie so the the proportions are not quite the same between the two like this is a little bit longer I guess the, the, the one from the first movie is a little bit you know squashed I guess in comparison so yeah neat stuff okay so yeah 20th Century Fox blah 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 power loader awesome stuff There is uh, Alan Ripley in The Alien Nest. This movie is just so incredibly awesome. I just happened to watch this uh, just, just this past weekend. So, yeah, Scorny Weaver in the background. Hmm. And of course, Michael Bean, he, he's known in. Uh, as the uh, uh, main character in Terminator, or the the, the co-star, I guess, Lance Hendrickson was also in Terminator, right? He was the the, the police guy uh, with the shotgun, and uh, she was in Terminator too. She was the foster mom. Bill Paxton was one of the punks in in uh, the first Terminator movie. If I'm missing anybody, let me know. But. Uh, those are the, the ones I can think of right away. Alright, yeah, so here, okay, so Hicks, Bishop, Newt, Vasquez. So I in, in, cut the cut, it's like ba Basquez. I had to think about it. <laughs> Basquez. <laughs> Vasquez. You get goofy. They, that's welcome to Japan, right? Drake. All right, he had those uh, those braids on his hat. All right. Bach. <laughs> okay. Bach. Yeah. Okay. Hudson. Gorman. <laughs> a pony, <laughs> a poem, right? Whatever. <laughs> it's just—it's funny because like the the R's kind of disappear, right? Bark is like his name is Burke, but it's Barker, right? That's how they translate it. Now here's Frost, right? He's—he was the one who had all of the the ammunition, uh, the ammunition magazines, right? All the all the, uh, all the bullets. 
and Dutrick, she was the the medical officer. She had the she had the the flamethrower when when she got uh, grabbed. Then she lit this guy on fire, and then he fell to his death. And they lost all her bullets, right? And there's there's Pharaoh. She's the the, the pilot. And uh, Spunk Meyer, the co-pilot. And they had other people too, I guess, but they're not that important. <laughs> Very little camera time. Gosh. So cool. So cool, guys. I love this movie. Yeah, that, that's a really cool shot right there of the Narcissus. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Yeah, there they go. Nice. Very cool, there's the alien queen. <laughs> there's the uh uh federal the, the the pilot, right, when she got nabbed. Alright, it says fly the friendly skies on her helmet. Oh no. She's not having a good day. And uh epic climactic battle at the end. Oh my gosh, and now here's the uh, the pulse rifles really really cool and uh, there's a resin kit of this right if you've seen um, Jairus's channel he, he he bought one of these things and restored it really cool it's the APC which is like a repurposed it's like one of those uh, um, airport um, Carts, right? And it definitely had like the TARDIS effect because when you know they, you see this thing driving around, and then when you actually see them interacting with it, they're like much taller than they than they could really fit inside there. Um, that's just in the movie you don't really notice it, I guess. But um, yeah, it's not a uh, full one-one scale that, that that they interact with. <laughs> oh well. And there's the the smart guns. Kind of reminds me of this uh, tripod that I've got <laughs> on my desk, right? Mm. Production notes. Oh my. Yeah, heck, was this even filmed anywhere on... I mean, was it just uh, completely on, on movie sets? I don't know. Hmm. Really cool. Yeah, this is the woman. She's got the chest burster. She's not having a good day either, right? <laughs> this is James Cameron. Oh, yeah, so you got to check out, um, what is it, uh, Xenogenesis, I think it's called. It's a short film that James Cameron had helped make, and it's only like 11 minutes long. You can find it on YouTube, and uh, you can really see elements of his later movies, right? Like, um, it's mostly just like a mecha combat uh, uh, short film. And, I mean, like, the, a the actors are like, you just see them, like, standing in front of, like, black painted walls or whatever, but um, it has elements of, like, uh, the Forbidden Planet, I guess. And there's, like, this robot that's kind of like one of those those hunter tanks from Terminator. And there's like a, like a spider kind of a, a mecha that the girl pilots and she's she's fighting it. It's really similar to like uh, the um, the the power loader, right? But yeah, it's all stop motion animation, and it's like it's from like the 70s, right? And that's how he got uh, hired for uh, was that uh, Battle Beyond the Stars? Which I loved as a kid, right? It's kind of like a science fiction. It's a, I think it's a Roger Corman movie. Um, it's like a, 
the Magnificent Seven in space. And of course, Magnificent Seven was the cowboy western uh, version of um, the Seven Samurai, right? <laughs> hmm. Awesome, guys. This is so cool. Yeah, I love this movie. And I remember, gosh, at Bookman's, it's a used bookstore, uh, books and media store, and uh, the first one was in Mesa, Arizona. And uh, they had the laser disc of the director's cut. And at that time, the laser disc was the only way to see the director's cut. And I used to just, oh man, I would just drool on that thing. And they had it like up high on a shelf so that, uh, you know, it was on display for everybody to see. And uh, eventually, when DVDs became the, the, the thing to the media to watch stuff on, then they released it on DVD, of course. But, gosh, this is pretty darn cool. Really cool. Aliens. Alright, this next one came with a couple of neat little bonuses. Like these little uh, flyers. Two of them for Empire Strikes Back. That is cool. That is super duper cool. Same size. Like, just get, what is it called? B4 size or something like that. I'm going to have to laminate these and find a place to put these on the wall or something. Okay, so these came with this. <laughs> Shinjuku Plaza, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Alright, so this is uh, Star Wars. The first one. funny talking with people I say the first movie the first Star Wars movie and they're like you mean episode one no stupid all right let's take a look in here oh my gosh a long time ago blah 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 all right oh cool pictures cool pictures hmm Love that vintage paper smell. Gosh, it's great. So yeah, this just is just touching on why the original movie can just subtly convey how immense a universe is just by focusing on one deserted, abandoned or you know, planet. Well not really abandoned, but like sparsely populated. You know, just the idea that these these little Jawa creatures can make a living off of just finding random robots wandering around in the desert and then reselling them to people. That is just incredible. And uh, just like this scene here with all of the, the, the junk and trash and, you know, robots with their arms off and everything. And um, just really, really showed the, how incredible this uh, universe was nothing was shiny and it wasn't like oh it's a robot no it's just it's something that's just been you know taken uh for granted right and they don't make a big deal out of it so that is just really really cool really cool and that is a much more powerful message than just visual overload. Visual overload with, you know, just too much crap flying around on the screen at once. There's just no no comparison. <laughs> Tuscan Raiders, look at that. <laughs> Jawas. Jawas. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Rebel Alliance there, that's great. Han, Han Yaksha, the Rebels, Rebellion. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's a nice picture of Carrie Fisher. <laughs> that's great. Hmm. Oh look, there's the, the docking rings. <laughs> nice detail. Oh, that, that's a cool picture there with a stormtrooper shooting a laser through there. That's so cool. So, 
you know, I'm not against the the idea of making tweaks to the original movies. It's just that, like, for example, in this scene, you can see the matte painting. It's like a totally different color. And, like, here, it's like, it looks straight on. It's great. But when you see it from different camera angles, you can tell it's just a matte painting. And it doesn't really blend well at all. Fixing that with CG... I'm all for it. I, I have no problems with that whatsoever. But when it's lazy, when they ha when they make like all of the X wings are somehow red five or something like that, it's just it's stupid, right? And they don't even bother to put the Astromex in the the Gold Squadron Y wings when they're in the the Death Star trench. They totally overlooked that. But. Uh, yeah, in 97, this didn't get fixed, but it was finally fixed for the DVD release. And I'm, pff, I'm not even going to talk about the Blu-rays. Gosh, I don't even, I haven't really bothered watching. I, I caught some of it on uh, TV. Like, we, when we had, um, like, a, a, a video recorder, when we, we had cable TV in Japan. Or, I'm sorry, in, uh, in Fuji, before we moved to, you know, where we live now. Uh, I, I had recorded it. And it was like in Japanese language only, so I didn't watch the whole thing, but I did watch, I skipped ahead and I watched a lot of the the, the added things with like R2-D2 hiding behind way too many rocks and all that kind of stupid crap. Uh, so now here we see there is an astromech in that Y-Wing right there. But when you see him in the, in the trenches, they're missing for some reason. Now this is like a construction here, that's not the the actual finished I don't think because it's like it's I don't see the, the the gun right the turret there's Leia's well that's not Luke's blaster Leia it says Luke that's Hans of course that's Chewie's and that's the stormtroopers oh that's cool. Yeah, it's like you, you see these these scenes like flash through the movie and you kind of forget about them. But yeah, that that's pretty cool. Hmm. A very famous picture there. So here we are: Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, Alec Guinness, Anthony Daniels. Peter Cushing, Kenny Baker. Where's David Prowse? I got, yep, David Prowse. I got to meet him once at the San Diego Comic Con in 2007. Pictures on my website. I didn't take a picture with him though, because I would have to have paid extra for that. I just took a picture of him. He was sitting all alone because people didn't recognize who he was. That's a cool photo right there. Huh. Yeah, that's what uh, actual sets are like, right? Instead of this green screen crap. Especially with episode 2 and 3. That was just nothing but green screens. It's such lazy, lazy crap. Because uh, the pod, the pods got ruined by a dust storm in episode 1 and Lucas just had a meltdown or something or other. Oh man, that's so cool. Hmm. That's really cool. So, oh, there's Wedge. So yeah, I've got lots of stuff to show you here. I got a lot of these these books lately. So, Y wings are always my favorite. I always like them more than the X wings. Golly, that's oh my gosh! This is another really famous promotional picture. That's great. That's cool. Oh, look at that. That's like right when the the X-Wing's exploding, that's really cool. That is great. Alright, lots more stuff to show you. Up next is the first Alien movie. Beautiful picture of the Nostromo on the back. Really, really cool.
And there's the big oil, or the, the, the refinery, whatever it is that they were, they were mining. Big refinery in space. So yeah, 1979. Cool, huh? There's the derelict. And this is what... The, the mystery behind this is what's so cool about this, right? Not knowing is what makes it so great. And that's why I completely refused to watch Prometheus. Just, I was not interested. When I f first heard about this, the movie, I thought maybe it's going to be really cool. But uh, and then I saw a lot of the, the crap about it. And I'm like, you know, when, the, when they have to try to... You know, explain the origins. Just forget it. I just don't. I don't want. It's stupid. It's better off not knowing than to see that the uh, stupid, crappy um, uh, explanation that, that they come up with. Just no, thank you. Cool. There's the navigator there. Yeah, you just. It's so much more enthralling as a mystery and not knowing you know I just uh, like what Patton Oswalt said I mean the guy's a perv but he says I, I, I what he said about that skit if you, you look it up on YouTube he's talking about uh, uh, go back in time and kill George Lucas with a shovel he's like look I don't want to know where my favorite stuff comes from and uh, completely correct you know, I just, I don't care. I just don't want to know because it's, it's better off not knowing. It's more intriguing that way. Especially when you get to the actual uh, explanation and it's really stupid and doesn't live up to your expectations. <laughs> there he is. Kane, getting too close to that egg there, pal. Something might pop out and jump at you. Don't you know? I never understood. So you can see where that laser light's coming from, right? And it's like reflecting off of this, uh, um, this this field, right? It's like this uh, haze, and it's it's like noise sensitive when he puts his hand in there. What the heck is that for? I have no idea. I mean, were they was was the uh, the alien derelict like transporting these eggs as cargo or something? You, you just don't know. And you don't. I don't need to know, right? I, I don't need to see Darth Vader as a little kid because you know it's. I don't. I'm better off not seeing that. And then here we go. This is a uh, Nostromo with the actual mo filming model. That's great. No CG back in the '70s. Dan O'Bannon. I have never seen. Oh gosh, what was that movie called? It was like kind of like a precursor to Alien, and he was involved with it. I can't remember. God, I'll put it in the comments or something rather, but uh, or I'll I'll put it on screen here. Yes, I need to see it. I've heard it's not that great, but still, I, I am interested in seeing it. Unfortunately, a lot of stuff from the '70s. It's kind of hard to track down. Um, I have seen. Like uh, Silent Running, actually, I was able to rent that here um, at the at the Gale. That was really cool seeing that finally after all these years. Uh, when I lived in Shizuoka, couldn't find it for rent, but I moved to Gunma and I was able to find it. So there is an interesting video about how this was put up to auction. The Nostromo was was. Uh, Restored and uh, it was auctioned off. Unfortunately, it belongs in a museum. You know, as, as uh, Indiana Jones would say. And I, I, I heard the story about how this was like under a tarp on somebody's driveway for numerous, number you know, years. And I had, I was told about the, the, the possums that crawled inside and couldn't figure their way out, and they died. Um, that was mentioned in that video as well. Got to meet. Um, Oh, what's his name? Uh, Colt TV man. Uh, I forget his his name. But yeah, he he told me the whole story. Is Sigourney Weaver topless there? I I don't know. Maybe not. I can't tell. 
Uh, anyhow, it's just yeah, it's just the whole enthralling mystery is what's so cool about this. A straight through and through monster movie, but it's just really awesome. The second movie is more action. It's an action movie with monsters. Now it's really clever though. I think that they only have this one picture of uh, the xenomorph here. <coughs> Corona. And uh, they didn't want to spoil it too much for the movie, right? Because this is. I think you can buy these at the at the movie theater or something rather at the time. So. No. Big, look at that practical set. That's just incredible, man. You can see so much more intriguing than just people standing around in front of a green screen, like with the Tech of the Clones or something, rather. It's really great. Oh my gosh, it would take me a long time to try to translate this because of the, the level of vocabulary involved, but oh well. It's some of the grammar, too, I imagine. There she is in her undies. <laughs> oh my. Very cool. All right. Now. Draw. Oh my gosh. And uh, actually, it's kind of nice that Tron is really well known here in Japan whatsoever. So. Um. People assume it is. Oh shoot! I don't have to cut this open. I got tape right here. You know, Medicom Toy had made those Tron toys and such. It was like the Kubrick Trons and such. Um, it's really niche. Most people haven't even seen it. I talked to uh, two teachers today at the school I work at, and both of them are uh, you know science fiction aficionados, and they've never seen Tron. Actually, no, one had seen Tron, the other one hadn't. So. Carrier de-resing, oh my gosh, this is so cool, I love this movie, man. When I was a kid, I saw it, and I wanted to go see it in the theater, and my sister was like, no, it's about computers, we don't have a computer, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> yeah, right, and then I saw this on the Disney Channel, and golly, I loved it. Totally loved this movie, and I didn't quite understand everything, but it's like, dude, if you like video games, then that's that's enough. And ironically, the video game in the arcade for Tron was like a, it was like a collection of like four mini games. The light cycle one was kind of cool. The tank one was really hard, and then um, the NPC cone was that was like super easy. And the one where you're shooting those grid books, that was it's actually kind of easy. But, um, yeah, the, the tank one is hard, especially when you're f shooting three of them at the same time. Three enemies. There's a, the one thing, though, is that the NPC looks so dorky in this. <laughs> I always thought it looked kind of stupid. Oh. God, I love this movie. Well, there's Bruce Box Lightner, and he signed my Tron DVD. I got to meet him. I totally got to meet him. Sorry, my allergies are. Uh, it's the uh, end of May. That's when my allergies act up. There's a uh, clue, <laughs> who actually becomes like the enemy in the the follow-up movie, which I liked. I liked. A lot of people didn't like it, and it's funny because I was watching like a like a Spoonie experiment and some other online um, uh, movie reviewers and they were like dogging on it and it's like it was obviously just listening to what they were saying that they couldn't even remember the first movie very well so their opinion is kind of null and void oh that was great that was great when the recognizer collapses the bridge at <laughs> the broken recognizer and there's there's clue being tortured there an electronic odyssey. It all happens inside the computer. A world inside the computer where man has never been. Never before now. Damn, this movie's awesome. I just... Oh, God. 1982, man. That was the year for science fiction. Oh, my...
Oh, that's right. He was in Time Bandit. David Warner. He was in Time Bandit. Golly. Or Time Bandits. It's kind of silly. The Journey. <laughs> There's a video game featuring Journey, and I just finally played it for the first time. I was in, like, in MAME or Final Burn Nero on my computer, and I played it, and I'm like, it's kind of dumb. <laughs> they have, like, their little digitized faces and whatever. And uh, I think when you put in your name, you can actually put in your full name, so people were putting in, like, uh, you know, the F bomb or the S bomb or whatever. There's John Mobius Gerard. Oh, no, I did not know that. I know about Sid Mead, but really? Mobius did the costume design? Crap, that's cool. Now, he's the one who did The Long Tomorrow, and I never did get that comic book, but that is what is the visual inspiration for, you know, uh, Blade Runner and Akira. Uh, golly, I never got it. Now, once in a while, it gets reprinted and. Currently, I think it's like it goes for a lot of money on Amazon, unfortunately. Oh, this is so cool. The, every time, I, I just get chills with the whole light cycle scene when they go, and then they're, they're, you know, they transport to the grid, and then they just like fall over, and they look at that. It's just, I get so excited every time. That is just so cool. Oh my gosh, escape. Hey, you, this is an illegal exit. <laughs> Love this movie. Crap. Just want to scream at people who have, haven't seen this movie. Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da. And of course, yeah, I got a Tron movie poster. <laughs> you, you can't see it very well, though. It's a reflection. Yes, by the way, that is Nadia. I'm working on her. All right. So, yeah, it's like they had to, like, uh, film people separately. And they had to, like, you know, paste them into the movie. Because, like, the the film cameras that they used were, like, these really old cameras from the 60s. And um, it wouldn't... Cause, because of the way that the lighting was, they couldn't aperture on everybody at the same time. It couldn't focus on it because of the aperture. So they had to, like, film people separately. Incredible. Now the discs of Tron game, though, that was way more fun in the arcade. Oh, wow. Really cool stuff. Well, you know what, guys? I've got a bunch of these that I've obtained. So, uh, yeah, you're going to see a whole bunch more. So stay tuned. The next video, I'm going to be showing some Star Trek and the Black Hole. So, yeah, um, stay tuned for that. As always, Live long and prosper. May the force be with you. It's so long and thanks for all the fish. Bye.